Hi guys, my name is Anika and this is 8th grade science with Alsta. The standard covered in today's video is the molecular biology standard. It talks about food, energy, and general health. As always, each of the following questions is timestamped, so you can skip the explanations for questions you feel confident in and move on to the next timestamp. If you feel that you need extra review with specific topics after this video, check out our links for further reference page. On this page, we have resources that correlate with each question, so you can work on the challenging ones. This page is linked in the description box, along with all the questions in this video. With all that being said, let's get into the first question. Question 1. What are the small specialized structures in the cytoplasm of eukaryotic cells called? The answer is organelles. So if you got that wrong, let's take a second to go over some cell-related definitions. So a eukaryote is any cell that contains a clearly defined membrane-bound nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles. Any multicellular organism, plants, animals, or fungi, are eukaryotic. Organelles are the specific structures within a cell. Each organelle has its own purpose. Just like we have different organs for different purposes, for example, the stomach breaks down our food, organelles can be considered the organs of cells. Membrane bound. Membranes are like tiny thin skins around a cell or organelle. They are made up of proteins and or lipids. They protect the cell or organelle and control what gets in and out of it. Membrane bound means that something, like an organism, has a membrane. Some of the major organelles include chloroplast. This is the organelle in plants that carries out photosynthesis. Mitochondria, the organelle used for energy production. The nucleus, which stores DNA and is basically the cell's brain. Lysosomes, which digest and recycle waste from the cell. And the endoplasmic reticulum, which produces and transports necessary proteins. Question two, what are the three reactants and two products of photosynthesis? Keep in mind that reactants are the substances that go into a chemical reaction and products, is, products are the substances produced by the reaction. These are the answers. The reactants are carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight, and the products are glucose and oxygen. Photosynthesis is the process plants use to convert carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight into food. This food is both for the plants themselves and also other organisms, like us, that can't provide, produce food on our own. Glucose is the sugar produced and oxygen is a byproduct of the process. A byproduct is something made by the process that isn't the actual purpose of the process. The purpose of photosynthesis is to produce food, aka glucose. Oxygen isn't food, but it is produced in the process anyway, which is good because we need it to breathe. The glucose produced by photosynthesis is what we and other heterotrophs eat. The oxygen produced by photosynthesis is, again, what we use to breathe. Photosynthesis uses the light energy from the sun and transforms it into stored chemical energy. It is also vital in maintaining the amounts of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere because it takes it in for the process. This is why things like deforestation, where you cut down many plants, are bad for the atmosphere. If we don't have enough plants taking in carbon dioxide, it'll stay in the atmosphere, trapping heat on Earth's surface. Moving on to question three. What are the two reactants and three products of cellular respiration? These are the answers. The reactants are glucose and oxygen, and the products are carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. Cellular respiration is the process during which organisms like us take glucose from plants and make it into a form of energy that our cells can use, called ATP. ATP is the main energy-carrying molecule found in the cells of all living things. Cellular respiration takes in the two products of photosynthesis, glucose and oxygen. It can be carried out aerobically, 
with oxygen, or anaerobically, without oxygen. Fermentation is the process of breaking down glucose, aka cellular respiration, anaerobically, without oxygen. An example of when we would use fermentation is when we are exercising and our body is struggling to get enough oxygen to all our muscles to give them the energy to keep moving. Fermentation would pr produce ATP for our muscles without oxygen. However, fermentation can cause pain in our muscles and doesn't produce nearly as much ATP as the normal aerobic cellular respiration. The byproducts of cellular respiration are carbon dioxide and water. We release the carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere by breathing. Plants then use this carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. It's all just a big cycle. Cellular respiration takes place in the mitochondria of a cell. The big thing to notice about cellular respiration and photosynthesis is that the reactants of one are the products of the other. The chemical formula for photosynthesis is 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus light energy results in C6H12O6 plus 6O2. And the chemical formula for cellular respiration is C6H12O6 plus, 6 C plus 6O2, and this part should seem familiar from the photosynthesis equation, results in 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus ATP, which is the energy in cellular respiration. The difference here is that the energy goes from light energy in photosynthesis to ATP in cellular respiration. Other than that, the chemical compounds are exactly the same. Photosynthesis uses carbon dioxide, the 6CO2, and water, the 6H2O, to produce glucose and oxygen. The glucose is the C6H12O6, and the oxygen is the 6O2. And cellular respiration uses glucose and oxygen, which is on the left side of the equation now, to produce carbon dioxide and water. This is a constant cycle. Organisms are always releasing the reactants needed for photosynthesis, and photosynthesis is always releasing the reactants needed for cellular respiration. Question four. As organisms interact with one another for food, what type of energy is being transferred? The answer is chemical energy. Food has chemical energy. Question five, true or false? Almost all food energy originates from the sun. The answer is true. Plants use the light energy from the sun to produce the chemical energy that is passed between organisms as they interact for food. The light energy is converted into the chemical energy. Without the light energy, there would be no chemical energy. Question six. What are the three macronutrients we need in our diets? The answers are carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids, aka fats. Macronutrients are the nutrients we use in the largest amounts. The big thing you need to know is the major purpose of each macronutrient. Carbs are the primary source of energy for the body. Proteins are needed for growth and repair of tissues. And lipids are the energy reserve of the body. If you want to know everything about each of these macronutrients, you can pause the video here and read this slide. Or you can also check out our full slideshow, which is linked in the description box below. Question 7. Which of the following is not one of the things that can happen to macronutrients taken into the body? A. Used to give us energy to do work. B, can be incorporated into our body's tissues. C, they can help produce oxygen for our bodies. D, they can be stored as fats.
The answer is C. They help produce oxygen for our bodies. So based on this question, macronutrients actually do not help produce oxygen for our bodies. So let's go through the answer choices and see why the rest of them are correct. The first answer, macronutrients are used to give us energy to do work, is true because that's probably their biggest purpose. They give us the energy we use every day. For a healthy body, food must be burned for the release of energy stored in it and not just stored away. For this, we have to exercise. It's important to find the balance between exercise and diet. The second answer, macronutrients can be incorporated into our body's tissues, is true because that's what we use proteins for. Without proteins, our bodies cannot create tissue. The last answer, macronutrients can be stored as fats, is also true. Lipids make up our body's energy reserve. To become this energy reserve, they must first be stored as fats. Question 8. If you need a quick burst of energy, which of the following would you eat? A. Meat. B. Nuts. C. Fruit. The answer is C. Fruit. The macronutrient group for quick bursts of energy is carbohydrates. Meat is a protein, nuts contain lipids, and fruit is a carb. Fruits and vegetables are also better than other carbs, such as bread, for quick bursts of energy because they are simple carbs, which are easier for your body to break down and use. I hope that this video was a good review of this standard. If you need extra practice with any of the topics in this video, make sure to check out our links for further reference page. If this video was helpful for you, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.